Previously, we looked at how to conduct a frequency analysis of a circuit in CircuitLab. And this is, our, again, our low-pass filter with a corner frequency of 100 hertz. And so in our frequency analysis, what we get out of this is to see that it is indeed a low-pass filter because part of the signal up here is going to pass through. And then once we hit the corner frequency at 100 hertz, we know that the signal coming through will be at 0 0.707, or in this case 0 0.705, of its original magnitude. And then as the frequency of the signal increases, that signal will eventually die. And again, one thing to remember about CircuitLab is that this output here, in terms of the frequency analysis, is not actually voltage. Consider it as a unitless multiplier, and in this instance, it'll be 0 0.707 or 0 0.705 of whatever signal is coming in. And to help you get a better understanding of that, let's actually go back into the time domain and do a time domain analysis of this circuit. And to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a small simulation where I take this uh, voltage source. It will have an amplitude of 1 and a frequency of 10 hertz. And so at 10 hertz, because that's well below the cutoff frequency, we expect that signal to pass through. And I'm going to plot my incoming signal which is going to be my source, and my outgoing signal, which is going to be the voltage across the capacitor. And we're going to run our simulation for about a second, and we're going to take a thousand points for our simulation. And because our input signal should not be affected really in any way, when we finish this simulation, we should get two almost overlapping lines. And as we finish the simulation, what you see here is that we have the blue wave which is our incoming wave, and then our orange wave is the wave across the filter. And from the perspective of the amplitude, they're almost identical. Like there's a, a teeny, teeny bit of loss um, due to the resistor and the capacitor in the circuit, but you can see the amplitude of the signal is effectively the same. Something else you should note though is that they are now out of phase. This peak of my source has been somewhat delayed in time because of the filter. And so remember, the filter has an effect on both the amplitude and the phase of the signal coming through. For most of our filters, we're only concerned about the amplitude, but there is also a phase delay or a phase shift caused by the circuit. So now we've sent through a 10 hertz signal, and we see that it, it passes through almost unharmed. Let's send through a signal that is right at our cutoff frequency. So we will send it right at 100 hertz. And this time we don't want to run it for a full second because that would be just far too long. So let's go uh, 10 oscillations of the signal and we'll, we'll do another one milli step size. And what we should expect to see here though is that that signal is going to be attenuated. It is going to be reduced and it should be at 70% of its amplitude. Ah, and so what you get here, you see how my waves are all jagged. I increased the frequency of the wave, but did not increase the step size, and so we have a very jagged system here. So I'm gonna actually change this down to be one microsecond, and rerun our solver, and now our curves are much, much smoother. But what we should see here is blue is again our incoming wave, and orange is our wave across the filter. And what we find is that there is a loss, there is an attenuation of the signal, and because we sent this in at exactly the corner frequency, the amplitude of this wave should be 0 0.707, because that is how much attenuation at the corner frequency we get. And so right here, it's about 0 0.705, which is good enough for our government work. And we can see and verify that at this frequency, our filter has begun to operate because the, the amplitude of our wave is at 70%. Now here's an important point. The voltage is not always going to be 0.7. It's going to be 70% of its maximum. And so if I double the amplitude of this wave to 2 volts, we should not get 0.707 on the output. We should get 1.4, which is going to be double 0.707. So when we run the solver again, you see that our wave, again, has a maximum amplitude of 2, and 2 times 0 0.707 is going to give us this value right here at 1.4. So we can see in the simulation how our filter is affecting the amplitude of our signal. 
And not only does it affect the amplitude, the phase is much greater now. So the phase of the signal has been greatly affected. And so something we didn't talk about a lot when we were doing the uh, frequency analysis is that there's an effect on the amplitude and the phase. And so let me get rid of the dBs here. If you go back and you look at this, you can see that at about 100 hertz, there is going to be a phase shift of about 45 degrees. So there's going to be a change in time much more significant than it was up here at 10 hertz. So these are two complementary methods that you can look at frequency analysis to understand sort of mathematically what the impact will be, but it's always really helpful to come back and do a time domain analysis to sort of verify your thoughts. And just to make sure we're sane, we said that at about uh, 10 kilohertz, this signal should basically be dead. So let's put in a 10 kilohertz signal and let's get 10 oscillations of those waves. We'll stay with our one microsecond simulation. And so what we should see here is that this orange wave is gonna basically be gone. So we should be basically filtering out all of our signal across this circuit. So blue is our incoming wave. That's at two volts, that's its natural amplitude. And orange is the wave that comes out of the filter. And because this signal is well past the corner frequency, the signal is basically removed. So we have almost just a flat line coming out of our circuit. And so the maximum amplitude here is barely 40 millivolts. So we have taken a two volt signal and because we've set up our filter, we've reduced it all the way down to 40 millivolts. So again, two complementary methods to see how a filter works. You should always check yourself in both the frequency domain and the time domain, pick out values where there'll be no or little or there's significant filtering to make sure you understand how all the pieces go together.